find our Lord Jesus Christ in the gospel that he is angry multiple times. He is not very often angry, but he is angry. And then we have today the example, the reason why perhaps this gospel and epistle were chosen for today, and the example of the anger of David. And then St. Augustine speaks about the, the, the lack of anger of Jeremiah. He says, when we read the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah preached to the people, and they didn't listen. He preached them the word of God, he preached them the truth, he told them how to know, love, and serve God. He was a true prophet of God, and the people didn't listen. And Jeremiah did not become angry. But rather, Jeremiah became very sad. And when yet, yet he, he rather said, Lord, do so and so to me, I don't want to go on anymore. For the people are not listening to the word of God. Should he not be angry? He is telling them the truth. They are not listening. He's trying to convert their hearts. They are not listening. He is speaking to them, and they are not listening. It is concerning the things of God. Jeremiah speaks the truth, and he does not become angry when the people do not listen. The same thing happened multiple times in the lives of the saints. The St. Thomas preached to the people of Southern Carolina and in, in India, and they did not repent, and they didn't go to God, and they didn't listen to him, and he became very sorrowful. He went up to the top of the mountain to weep. Well, we read in the book of Kings today about David. On the day that Saul died, Saul is dead, and three days later, David does not know that he is dead, and he does not know that he is now to be king. He is now king because Saul has died. And a Malachite comes with his garments rent and ashes on his head, and he runs to David, and he says, David, Saul is dead, as is also Jonathan, his son. So David, Saul is dead, and how dost thou know that Saul is dead? I was passing through a battlefield, for the battle was over. And I walked by and saw the king lying there, dying on the ground, while he was still alive. And I came over to him, and he said to me, he, he fell up, he was, he was weak, and he fell upon his own spear, while he fell on the ground, and he was still alive. And he said, I am dying. But you must kill me and finish me off. And then in obedience to him, I killed him. And then I took the royal diadem off of his head, and I took the bracelet off his right wrist, and I brought it, brought it to you, that you might know that you are the king now. And then David, when he heard that Saul had died, he wept, and he mourned the death of Solomon of Saul and Jonathan. And he rent his garments. Then after he wept, he turned upon the Amalekite and he said, Who are you? I am the son of Amalekite. But who are you who are the son? Did you not know that you should not touch the anointed of God? Why did you touch the anointed of God? For Saul was anointed king by the prophet Samuel. Saul is the anointed of God. Saul is the head of the Holy Church. Saul is the blessed and sacred of God, and you killed him. And Saul, David, became exceedingly angry, and immediately he commanded one of the soldiers to fall upon the Amalekite and kill him, and he was killed immediately. So let us consider the anger of Saul, of David, and the lack of anger of Jeremiah. The first reaction of David and the first reaction of Jeremiah. Now in both cases, the, 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 the law of God is being invoked. Jeremiah is preaching the law of God. He's preaching the word of God. And the people are hearing the divine truth coming from him. And they are not repenting and coming to God. But he is sorrowful and he is not angry. David, however, when he hears that Saul is assaulted, immediately he weeps. And secondly, he is angry. St. Thomas Aquinas tells us that there are 11 passions. We're speaking here about the passions. These are movements of the soul which we cannot directly control. 
They depend indirectly upon choices we've already made. For instance, if you find out this happened that, that, that the your, your your husband died. You find out your husband died, turns out he just took out a hundred thousand dollar life insurance policy, turns out he used to he beats you every day, it turns out that you hate his guts, it turns out that you were planning his death with your new boyfriend, it turns out that he had everything all lined out, and he died in a car accident. You react. You have a very joyful reaction. Now, why do you have a joyful reaction? Because of the choices and decisions you made before you found out. However, if you happen to get along with your husband, and he happens to be a good husband, and then you find out that someone shot him or killed him or he died in an accident, you have a sorrowful reaction. What caused a sorrowful reaction? And what caused a joyful reaction? It was not the death of the husband. The death of the husband can be a cause for rejoicing. Remember in Phoenix, Father Bebo and I driving down the road with a car in front of us with the cans and sprayed on it, just divorced. Somebody was really happy because they just got divorced. We must understand concerning the passions. We do not choose to be angry. We do not choose to experience joy. We don't choose to experience sadness. These things happen because of choices we have already made. When you find out that your man is has got your horse has won the race, you have joy because you bet on that horse. When you find out your horse lost the race, you have sadness because the horse you bet on didn't win. Therefore, remember this concerning the reaction of the passions. When I get angry, or when I get joyful, or when I get sad, it is not because of the thing that happened. It isn't because of the death of the husband. It isn't because of the victory of the horse. It isn't because of what somebody said. It isn't because of what they did. Hence, St. Bonaventure says, we become angry, or we become joyful based upon what is important to us. Consider David. David jeopardized his life many times to save Saul. And David was almost killed by Saul multiple times. Remember that Saul took a spear to throw it at David. And Saul tried to kill David. And Saul was jealous of David. Saul was envious of David. Saul commanded David's death. Saul sent David into, into exile. Then Saul changed his mind and David came back. And then David, Saul changed his mind and tried to kill him again. And then Saul changed his mind, let David back. And then he changed his mind and tried to kill him again. Always going back and forth. Why would David not be happy when he found out that Saul died? If anything should have rejoiced and gave peace to his heart, it should have been Saul's death. But what was it that Saul loved, that David loved? David loved the law of God. He really loved it. See, our passions are like a litmus test. We can't directly control the passions. Hence, we can tell by analyzing our passions what's important to us. So when someone tries to kill Saul, David is filled with sorrow, firstly, because he loved Saul. He loves him. And God commanded us to love our neighbor. Now, if there's any, any neighbor that David should not love, it's particularly and specifically Saul. Saul tried to separate him from his best friend, Jonathan. Saul, because of his wicked choice, was responsible for the death of Jonathan. Remember, Jonathan died the same day that Saul died. And it was Saul's evil choices that caused not only himself to die, but caused Jonathan to die. So Saul was responsible for the death of Jonathan, who was not wicked. And Saul was responsible for his own death. He even went to a soothsayer the night before he died. He did not go to a prophet, he went to a witch to find out what would happen on the day of the battle. Saul made one wicked choice after another. But what is the situation of Saul? He is the anointed of God. He is the head of the church. He has holiness inside of him, 
And David loved that holiness. And David would not touch Saul, though he could have killed Saul multiple times. Not only could have killed Saul multiple times, but he knew that when he would kill Saul, and if he did kill Saul, all the people would rejoice in the death of Saul, and they would follow David. So therefore, David, he did not get angry, number one, because he loved his enemy. Remember, our Lord Jesus Christ commands us to love our enemies. He loved his enemy. He loved Saul. And when he heard that Saul had died, he was immediately filled with sorrow because he loved him. And then when he discovered that Saul was killed by a man who on his own free will killed David, killed Saul. Now remember, Saul asked the Amalekite to kill him, or so the Amalekite said. He asked the Amalekite to kill him, therefore he was being obedient. He was being obedient. He was being obedient to the head of the church. In an obedience to the head of the church, he killed the church. Like many, many bishops and priests of today who want to be good conservatives, they're being obedient. And in the obedience, they're killing the church. Now David was exceedingly angry. He was angry at the Amalekite because the Amalekite killed his enemy whom David loved. And he was angry at the Amalekite because the Amalekite killed the anointed of God. And what caused him to be filled with wrath was not that David loved Saul, because he did love Saul, but that David, but that Amalekite killed the anointed of God. So notice also the reason of his anger. He was not angry because Saul, because he loved Saul and Saul was killed. He was angry because the Amalekite violated the law of God and attacked the very essence of the church and committed a very great sacrilege. Because remember, to kill the king Saul was not only to commit murder, it was a sin of sacrilege because Saul was anointed of God. He was not just a layman. He was anointed of God. He had also prophecy powers. Therefore, when, when the Amalekite killed him, he killed the anointed of God. Translating to our situation in the church today, it is always wrong and it is sinful to be angry and hateful towards the anointed of God who is the Bishop of Rome called Pope Francis. We may be angry about his sins. We may flee them. We may have to fight against the sins of, 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 of the new Saul who is the Pope of Rome. But know that it is sinful to be angry or to be hateful of him. And it should be a matter of confession. Anger and hatred towards the anointing of God cannot be. It is necessary sometimes to fight as David had to fight. Necessary to flee as David had to flee. Necessary to obey as David had to disobey as David had to disobey. But it is never ever tolerable to have the hatred of the anointing of God. We cannot hate the bishop of the diocese. We cannot hate the priest of God. We cannot hate the anointing of God. It may be necessary to fight against him from time to time because of the situation of the church, but there cannot be a hatred. This hatred then leads to anger. This anger is sinful. Now St. Augustine points out in a sermon concerning anger and all other sins. Remember, there are three stages of sin. The first stage is the feeling of the anger. The second stage is or the temptation. Anger is brought before your mind. The second stage is feeling the anger. And the third stage is the consent to the feeling. It is in the third stage that sin exists. So if you have a feeling of anger, that does not mean you are in sin. But it does mean the love isn't right. Consider what we are angry about. This is a very important way to test our souls. What am I angry about? St. Bonaventure says, I am very angry at those that offend me. This is a sign that I love me more than anyone else. I am not very angry when those offend God. And when they do offend God, search more deeply. I don't mind if the people in, uh, in, 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 in Topeka offend God. All my people in Rome offend God. I don't mind the people that I know 
that I have to deal with, I reminds me of they offend God. I am really upset the society went modernist because I don't have a place to go to Mass anymore. So then why are you angry? You're angry because you have been inconvenienced. Self is the reason for the anger. Anger, therefore, is not all, it is a good litmus test. Why did our Lord Jesus Christ become angry with St. Peter? The only time we record that he is extremely angry with St. Peter, and he tells anger, Peter, get behind me, Satan. And he calls Peter Satan, and he is extremely angry. This is the day when St. Peter said to our Lord Jesus Christ, do not be crucified, do not go to suffering, don't go to the cross. He was trying to protect Jesus Christ from the cross. And when our Lord Jesus Christ in his humanity saw that Peter was trying to prevent him from the cross, he became angry with Peter. Get behind me, Satan. His anger was also to teach Peter what you become angry about. So David became angry with, with, with the Amalekite because the Amalekite killed the anointed of God. The love of the anointed of God was greater than the love of his own life. And this is the requirement of all of us. What is it that made Margaret Pithero able to become a martyr and a saint? She was a mother with child and pregnant at the time that she became a martyr. What made her able to become a martyr? The fact that she loved the mass and she loved the priesthood and she loved the Catholic faith more than she loved the health of her own self and her own family. Therefore, when a priest came by her place and needed to be hidden, she hid the priest. And when they tried to find the priest, they couldn't find the priest. And the priest successfully escaped. And in anger, they killed her and they murdered her. Now, why did she experience that death of martyrdom? And what was her statement? I am sorry that I have only one life to give for the church. I wish I had more lives to give. She loved the church and she loved them to protect the priest more than she loved to protect herself. What is it that makes a martyr able to be a martyr? He becomes angry about the right things. He does not become angry about the wrong things. And when he becomes angry about the right things, he is angry for the right reasons. And things that cause anger for others do not cause anger for himself. As St. Bonaventure says, says, my, I am worthy of punishment. I am worthy of being attacked and being punished because of my own sins. Therefore, if someone attacks me and gives me hell, even unjustly, I should not be angry. There's no reason for anger because I deserve to be punished for my other sins. And hence, it should not disturb me if others attack myself. But our trouble is, we are very angry when we are attacked or we are inconvenienced. The passion of anger was given to us by God as a means to strengthen us to overcome obstacles to arrive at a goal. You run into an obstacle, anger is a passion that helps you pick up that obstacle and remove it. It says, for instance, in the sacred scripture, be angry and sin not. Sin is an obstacle. Sin tries to get us to turn away from God. Be angry and remove the obstacle of sin. So in any case, this anger is found in David, the holy anger. Why was the anger there? Why did he react with anger? Because before he met the Amalekite, before he knew there was a problem, he already had the love of God first in his heart. He already had the love of the anointed and the holiness and the sacredness of the anointed king in his heart. And he would never touch the anointed because he realized how sacred it was for them to be anointed. What do we do right now? Pope Francis walks in this room. We have to kiss his feet because he is the anointed of God. But it will be the temptation will be to finish him off because of all the sins that he is guilty of committing. For our holy church. We must remember that God will be the one to remove him as God was the one to remove Saul. Saul became more wicked until the day of his death. He was removed by God. And then David took his place. But David would not lay his hand upon Saul. He would not rejoice in or promote anyone who tried to lay the hand upon Saul, even in obedience to Saul. Why is this? Because his love was right. 
the order of his love was right. And hence his passion of anger, his passion of sorrow and sadness responded correctly to the situation. Hence we test our souls from time to time. We test our souls. What do I get angry about? What is the cause and reason for my anger? And if I get too offended when, my, when something is said to slight me, I remember it very well. St. Bonaventure gives a rule about overcoming anger. A rule we mentioned in another occasion on the retreats often. But St. Bonaventure gives a rule about anger. He says, do not remember the offenses. Forget them. Don't repeat in your own mind what somebody said or what somebody did against you. And if you find yourself repeating in your own mind what someone said or did against you, make excuses for what they said and did. And remember that you have committed greater sins before God than they could ever commit against you. And this diminishes the anger. And don't remember, don't remember, don't remember what others have done against us. Do not remember. The devil always gets us to remember all the slights and all the crimes and all the personal offenses that someone has done against another. And this is the memory of Satan, which is the consideration of the harm to myself or my friends. My friend is harmed, I am offended. Someone else's friend is harmed, I am not offended. We look at the wrong way and the wrong things. Saul, so Saul was loved by David, but God, David, was not angry because he loved Saul. He was angry because Saul was the anointed of God whom Amalek decided to kill, even in obedience to Saul. Therefore, immediately David had Amalek killed. Whereas the man who cursed him, the man who cursed David as he was fleeing from his son Absalom, that man David would not allow him to be touched. He would not allow him to be harmed. He wouldn't allow it. In any case, you must remember, the cause of anger is love. St. Thomas says, the cause of the other ten passions is love. What causes anger? Love. Whenever my love is attacked, it causes anger. And hence it is a test. What do I love? By seeing what we get angry about equals a sign of what we love. And not only know what we get angry about, but why do we get angry? Most of us are angry not because God is offended, but because we are offended. And not because God is attacked, but because we are attacked in some way. And therefore, this is a sign the love of self guides us and not the love of God. Replace the love of self with the love of God. Replace charity to God, charity to self, the charity to God, and charity to neighbor. And we will discover that anger shall diminish. And we shall have a correct kind of anger. The anger that David had, the anger that the Lord Jesus Christ had. And this will be pulled out rarely, only when needed, as a tool to remove the obstacles to the kingdom of heaven. We think of that you all, and the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.